Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and a very warm welcome to this Apity review. So Apity is a photo editing application for PC and Mac designed by Skyland Software, those who have already brought us Luminar Neo. But unlike Luminar Neo, which is sort of a generalistic photo editing application, Apity is designed and optimized specifically for editing portraits. So having spent the last few days with Apity, I've sort of figured that the best way to review it is sort of through a linear sort of process through a single edit, if you like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin with a single portrait and we're gonna sort of take it from a rough image like this and bring it out to something that looks a little bit more like this. Now you might have noticed that the portrait I've chosen to edit is certainly less than perfect. Uh, the composition's not that great and the lighting is very poor indeed. However, this is very much a deliberate choice on my part. The reason being is that if you're already dealing with an excellent, well-lit portrait, the value of Apity is somewhat diminished. What I want to show you today is exactly what Apity can do to those images that need the most help. So let's start with perhaps the most obvious question. Is Apity limited to just editing? portraits well no it's not and here we are looking at the develop tab the develop tab is very much like the develop tab from luminar neo and features all the usual tricks such as boosting exposure uh, sort of pushing shadows pulling in highlights adjusting tone curves mixing color and saturation and so on that being said, if you are watching this review from the point of view of general photography, really Apity isn't for you and you would be better off with something like Luminar Neo instead. So let's start editing our portrait with Apity. Now the place we begin is masking. Now I've always liked masking for portraits. Uh, my typical trick is basically to mask the subject so I can emphasize them by shifting up brightness, adjusting curves and uh, sort of warming up the white balance. And then for the sake of contrast, I like to mask the background and diminish it by lowering its brightness and desaturation. In my eyes, this creates greater contrast between our subject and their background, thus giving our photo a little bit more pop. Now, Apity has various different masking options. It has the auto option, so we can automatically mask our subject, background, or sky. If those masks aren't quite right, we do have the option to sort of fine tune them by manual brushing. We also have luminosity masking, which enables us to sort of mask parts of our photo based on the brightness range of the pixels. And we have good old fashioned linear and radial masking. And as you can see, our edit has come an awful long way in very little time. So let's move on to the retouch tab. Here we'll find useful tools such as blemish removal, freckle removal, skin smoothing, dark circle removal, face brightening and eye enhancement. All of these features work very well indeed and require no more skill than the ability to drag a slider. We also have body retouching. Now on this photo, body retouching isn't particularly applicable. However, I can use it to sort of skin smooth my neck. Thus, it looks a little bit more a match for my face. So next is the reshape menu. This menu is split into faces, eyes, nose and mouth. And here we can slim faces, we can shape eyes and shape and position eyebrows, reshape noses, resize noses, and even straighten them. In this case, I'm actually straightening my sort of wonky broken nose. And we can also reposition the mouth and reshape the upper and lower lips. We also have the means to reshape the body. However, that is not applicable to this particular photo. If you would like to try body shaping for yourself, you can add in the description below, there is a link to your free Apity trial. Now we get onto the fun stuff, the creative effects tab. First up is Studio Light. Now with Studio Light, what we can do is sort of simulate the effect of a multi-light setup by dropping in digital light points into our photo. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm only dropping in one light point into this demonstration. And what we can do is we can sort of move the light point around. And as I do, you can sort of see the effect of the light shifting on the subject. We can also color our light so we can, for example, give it sort of an orange hue to warm up the image and we can even add textures. Studio light was first seen in Luminar Neo. I liked it then and I still like it now. 
Next up is another Luminar Neo feature, Portrait Bokeh AI. Now, as the name suggests, Portrait Bokeh AI enables us to blur our subject's background, thus sort of simulating the effect of a fast aperture portrait lens. Now, I am not saying that it is equivalent to a fast aperture portrait lens. However, Portrait Bucket AI is considerably cheaper and also works on the photos you've already taken. And despite not being the real thing, the effect is actually pretty pleasing to the eye and very effective in blurring out unwanted background clutter and creating more contrast between our blurred background and pixel sharp in focus subject thus giving us a 3D-like aesthetic. Other things you can do with Portrait Bokeh AI, we can sort of desaturate the background, we can make the highlights sparkle a little bit, and we can also adjust the depth so we can sort of create blurred sort of further away from the subject or sort of blur the background immediately behind them. Moving on, we have LUTs. Now, Aperty ships with 10 different LUTs but you do have the ability to add more later date. You can add a little bit of film grain for that retro look and you have the ability to adjust the amount of grain, the size of the grain and its coarseness or roughness. And the last thing for this edit is a vignette. As you might expect, we can position the vignette anywhere on the image we like, in this case, just dead center. We can make the sort of center spot brighter. We can make the corners even darker. We can adjust the size of the vignette and the feathering. And here is the end result. This is our before and after. And as you can see, the results are very impressive. Now, once you have finished your edit, you have a couple of options. What we can do is we can basically save the sum of our edit as a brand new preset. You can also copy the sum of those adjustments and then paste them onto one or more other photos for batch editing. So what is Aperty like to use? Well, as you can see, Aperty is extremely straightforward to use and an awful lot of fun. As long as you're able to drag a slider with your mouse, you are quite able to use Aperty. Now, due to the nature of editing these videos, something that wasn't always apparent is some of the performance issues. Now, these performance issues sort of spread themselves over three tiers. So first of all, once an image has been edited, particularly if the image has been edited with numerous sort of special effects, that image seems to become weighed down. So for example, if we sort of bounce from a normal non-edited image to a heavily processed image, the delay between waiting for a sharp preview and the ability then to do subsequent editing is quite substantial. You will also see delays between transitioning from one tool and another and perhaps the worst problem of all is that once it starts to slow down when you begin sort of adjustments as you drag your slider, Aperty will no longer react to your adjustments in real time. This results in a very sort of bumpy user experience as you sort of drag your slider. You can no longer see really what you're doing until you wait for a few moments for Aperty to catch up. At which point you will sort of find out whether your adjustment is right or wrong. Of course, if it is wrong, you then basically have to readjust, wait for the preview to catch up and again, see if your adjustment is valid. So this sort of takes us sort of from precision adjustments to something that feels a little bit more like trial and improvement. But regarding performance, I would like to point out something very important. We are all using different hardware and we're all editing different file types and sizes. Thus, for you, performance might absolutely be fine or indeed it could be worse. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you try Aperty for yourself. And again, to that effect, there is a link to your free Aperty trial in the description below. So let's say you've got this far into this Aperty review and you've decided that Aperty isn't for you. What are the best alternatives to Aperty? Well, there aren't too many sort of portrait centric photo editing applications out there, but the most obvious alternative I can think of is Luminar Neo itself. Now, unlike Aperty, Luminar Neo is a generalized photo editing application. So it is equally at home uh, processing portraits and landscape photos. However, Luminar Neo has many of the tools that make Aperty great. So for example, we have Portrait Book AI, we have Studio Light, we also also have skin smoothing and body reshaping. However, those features in Aperty have been expanded on, at least in some cases, and there are many new tools in Aperty, particularly the ability to apply makeup. 
All of this means I can offer a rather straightforward recommendation. If you are a portrait-centric photographer, Apatit is very much the way to go. However, if you're a generalized photographer who likes to take photos of landscapes and people, Luminar Neo is much more suitable. And I will be sure to put a link to your free Luminar Neo trial in the description below. Another alternative is ACDC Ultimate. Now, unlike Apti, ACDC Ultimate is a full-blown photo management and editing studio with not one, but two separate photo editing applications, a Lightroom-style RAW developer and a Photoshop-style layer-based editor. It also has AI Face Edit, now, AI Face Edit isn't quite as comprehensive as Aperty, but it actually has some features that Aperty does not. Most impressively, you can sort of flip a frown into a smile. You can change your subject's gaze if they weren't looking at the camera to begin with. And you can also fix crow's feet, which is actually a pretty good feature, particularly for me. Furthermore, AI Face Edit reacts to your inputs in real time. It is lightning fast and feels very good to use. But at the end of the day, it isn't quite so well equipped as Aperty. And again, if you are a portrait centric photographer, Aperty probably has more to offer you. If you would like to try AI Face Edit and of course ACDC Ultimate in general, there is a link to your free trial in the description below. So to conclude, is Aperty any good? Well, yes, it is. It's awfully straightforward to use, extremely capable and a lot of fun. Thus, it is such a shame that it isn't quicker. Now having to wait a few moments as it bounces from one super tool to another doesn't seem like a big deal to me. After all, these are huge time-saving labor savers in themselves. However, the time it takes to bounce from one preview to another is pretty severe. Once Aperty slows sufficiently that it is unable to keep up with your adjustments in real time, the whole user experience feels bogged down, heavy, and lacks the precision that it really ought to. Now, ultimately, this means that Aperty risks alienating one of its audiences, the professional photographer. After all, I don't think a professional photographer would be willing to process an entire wedding shoot with Aperty until its speed issues have been resolved. But then again, the people who sort of stand to gain from Aperty the most aren't necessarily the professional photographer. After all, why does a professional photographer need studio light when they actually own real studio lights? Thus, it is actually the casual photographer that stands to gain the most from Aperty. With Aperty, casual photographers will be able to overcome challenges such as a poor lens, bad lighting, or even the subject's bout of acne. But that is not to say that the professional photographer can't benefit from Aperty. In fact, Aperty could be an absolute godsend for saving that critical image that didn't quite work out the way the photographer was expecting. Now, it's very much worth pointing out that this is the very earliest iteration of Aperty, and every version after this date is likely to be better and hopefully an awful lot faster. But even in its current newborn state, I liked Aperty a lot, and I think you will too. The speed issues can't be overlooked, but neither can his capabilities. Thus, if you think Aperty is for you and you would like to give it a go, look in the description below and you will find a free trial. Now, if you would like to know more about Aperty, do think about stopping by my review over at silentpeakphoto.com. Or if indeed you've decided that Aperty isn't quite for you, stop by my best photo editing applications guide to find out which will suit you best. Now, that concludes my Aperty review. I hope you found that useful. My name's Richard and I wish you the best of days. Bye-bye.